morning, the United Nations says more than one million people have left their homes since the Russian forces invaded Ukraine. Now, the U.S. also says it's recorded more than 750 civilian casualties since the fighting began. People across Ukraine who haven't left their homes are taking cover in makeshift bomb shelters. In fighting yesterday, Russian forces targeted two seaports and continued the bombardment of Ukraine's second largest city. That's Kharkiv. In the upstate last night, check this out. Members of the upstate Family Baptist Church in Spartanburg held a rally near Woodruff Road. Everyone who took part has a loved one in Ukraine. Organizers say that they're trying to create awareness all across the upstate. You know, tomorrow morning when everybody wakes up to have their cup of coffee, we're going to be checking in on our loved ones. We're going to be checking in with our family to see if they're alive, to check on the news. And this has got to stop. It was a big turnout last night, and she says that they've received an amazing amount of support from the community. The group plans to join another group for a rally this weekend in Falls Park in downtown Greenville. At 650, a Greenville man has been sentenced for attempting to sexually assault a woman on the Swamp Rabbit Trail. This man here, Ronald McKinney, pleaded guilty on Tuesday. The assault happened near the Kane Halter YMCA back in 2019. Police say McKinney attacked her from behind, tried to take off her clothes, then hit her in the head with a gun before running away. Police found the pistol at McKinney's home and found the victim's DNA on it. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison. In western North Carolina, an arrest has been made five years after two people were killed in Forest City. Jose Gonzalez of Sunrise, Florida, is accused of killing Akira Hooper and Stephanie Walker. Both were found shot at a home on Arlington Street in 2017. Police say the investigation began after someone found their two children wandering the streets near the home. Police did not release a motive. Gonzalez is currently in Broward County in custody down in Florida, awaiting extradition back to North Carolina. And in Union County, we have a happy update about a dog that was, uh, well, tortured by his owners. The dog was taken to the Union County Animal Shelter after he was rescued, and the shelter named the dog Asher. The shelter's director says Asher is in good spirits right now, but they're worried about one of his legs, and Asher needs more care than the shelter can provide. So he's now going to go to a specialist in Charleston, down in the Low Country. Now this man here, Tyler Jurdo, is facing several charges following his arrest, including ill treatment of animals, resisting arrest, and escape. At 651, South Carolina DHEC is aligning with the CDC's new mask guidance, and that means state health leaders are relaxing the mask guidelines because we're in a low transmission stage. However, if you are around someone who is immunocompromised, they say you should still wear a mask. DHEC is also looking at herd immunity and says reaching that is complicated. That's been a little bit of an elusive and, and, and moving target, a little bit, um, you know, it, because we we made initial projections based on you know earlier strains of of the virus and as variants have come along that have different mutations we've we've seen that people who've previously been infected um, still get reinfected people that have been vaccinated they still get a mild form of the illness even though they stay out of the hospital which is our goal dhec is also pushing people to get at-home tests with many testing sites closing right now Happening today, the Spinning Jenny in Greer is hosting an outdoor parking lot event with activities for the whole family. Our Daniel Robinson is joining us now live from there with how this event helped keep his, this company open during the pandemic. Good morning, Daniel. Hey, Patrick, good morning. Like many companies this month, actually two years ago, everything started to shut down with the pandemic. So places had to get creative and create those safe ways that communities can come together while still being able to support themselves financially. One of the ways that here the Spinning Jenny did that is with Thursdays at the Jenny. This event here has lots of games. We even have uh, we have cornhole over here and come take your chance and bring your friends out to play that. We even have giant Jenga here. If this falls over, then I apologize about that. But you can come and take your chill. Oh, look at that. See, it's a lot of fun. I even did this this morning. I'm going to walk away before that actually falls over. But a lot of fun stuff out here that you can support this company and just be able to come outside and enjoy this event safely. Now, it does kick off tonight at 5. We'll go until about 8 o'clock. All of this is for free. There will be, though, food trucks as well as drinks that you can purchase here. But they say the goal here is to bring the local community together as well as local artists and local bands here so people can enjoy the outdoors together. We'll have more coming up on our website, WYFF4.com. But for now, live in Greer, Dana Robinson, WYFF News 4.
Looks like a great spot for an event. Thank you, Daniel. South Carolina Attorney General Alan Wilson has joined a nationwide investigation into the social media site TikTok. Investigators will specifically be looking at what the app is doing to keep users so engaged. They'll also look at any risks posed to the mental health of children. They want to determine whether any of TikTok's practices go against state consumer protection laws. In response, the owners of TikTok uh, say that the app limits its features by age, and they say they design policies with the well-being of young people in mind. BMW is once again expanding operations in Spartanburg County. It's adding a new press shop. The $200 million investment announced yesterday will create 200 new jobs. BMW says the new plant will stamp sheet metal parts for future BMW models out of raw coils of steel. Uh, looking to all the technologies which uh, are ahead of us, looking for more electrified vehicles um, to be produced. It is very, very important to have trained and skilled uh, people and this we have to do here on site. Now, production on that new facility is scheduled to start in the summer of 2024. A group of students from the Clemson Life Program at Clemson University got the chance to hit the water with elite pro anglers. This is ahead of the Bassmaster Classic on Lake Hartwell this weekend. With life jackets and fishing poles in hand, these students set off on Lake Kiwi yesterday morning to get some tips from the pros. A beautiful day for it. One student said he was excited to get on a boat like this for the first time. I came to fish also um, just to have a good time, and I'm very excited we get to partner with Yamaha and get to go out with these pros and learn how to do some new techniques to how to fish. Well, I've never been on one of these boats. This is a first, so I'm very excited about that. Okay, the Clemson Life Program prepares students with disabilities for a successful future. Program coordinators say an experience like this helps give students opportunities far beyond the classroom. The Bassmaster Classic starts Friday morning on Lake Hartwell.